Hello everyone, Hubert here and a really special guest uh, today with me, Johnny uh, from uh, Nothing More. Hello Johnny, how are you? All good? Doing very good, man. Yeah, how you doing? I'm, I'm really good too. It's a pleasure to, to meet you here and uh, I have to start from, from this because you guys have released uh, the new single, If It Doesn't Hurt, uh, a few days ago. Um, congratulations because uh, it's a great song Thank for you. me, uh, with great lyrics, a really powerful one, I would say. And I want to ask you, was that kind of uh, relief, maybe, for you to write a song like this? Because in the chorus you sing um, the words, uh, I never knew that I could feel this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely cathartic. Uh like most of our music, I kind of pour my life experiences into the lyrics and into the soul of the song. So it was a, I don't know, just kind of one of those moments in life where almost like a learning lesson, uh, you go through kind of all these different experiences at different points in your life. And this was just one of them where uh, I learned a lot about myself and learned a lot about kind of human nature and how, uh, People can, you know, either help each other or hurt each other in many different ways. And so, yeah, I poured a lot of that into this song and it feels great that it's finally out there. We, I was sitting on it for like a year, almost a year and a half, uh, just waiting for it to come out. So it's been like okay. maddening on my end of things. People don't realize that. <laughs> uh, is that song uh, the first <clears throat> single for the next album or is it just a, a separate single? Um, yeah, that's going to be the first single off, uh, the new album and the new album is, uh, I would definitely say, I think it's our, probably our best album in regards to just immediacy. Like it's a song, it's an album full of bangers where they just, they kind of hit like this song where it's just easy to digest, but also in your face and, and moving fast and exciting and, Uh, it's less of a deep dive, like maybe Spirits was. Spirits was a little bit more um, indulgent. Mm -hmm. And this one is a little more just like amped up and digestible and uh, big courses. So I, I think it's going to do really, really well. I can't wait. Okay. Are you guys working on the songs right now? You have a demo version or, or how does it look? Yeah, we're like, um, we're pretty much done writing the record. Uh, we are in the final stages of mixing the songs uh, where we're just kind of touching up how the songs are presented. Uh, I'm still recording a few background vocals, like little elements, uh, some polishing things, but we're very, very close. We're also finishing up a, a few features from like other singers and stuff that we're going to have on the album. Uh, and then it'll be ready to go. But we'll probably release probably two more songs at least, I think, before the album is released. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to say, when I look uh, at your performances, at you on the stage, that uh, you look very healthy, very athletic, I would say. Um, you have also a lot of energy, of course, uh, on the stage. How do you take care of your uh, health and uh, how important is that for you to keep your body in a good uh, condition all the time? Yeah, um, it's absolutely something I have to be really conscientious of and manage, especially with traveling on the road because you're, you have so many variables that are changing every day, whether it's like sleep or where you can find a bathroom or what food you're going to have access to. Like it, it, it is kind of a challenge when you're on the road. Whereas when I'm home, I have more of a set routine and kind of go to fo uh, foods that I get at the store that I, so I kind of, I can manage my environment better, uh, which as a result, I usually have better health. But when I'm on the road, um, number one, and I think this is for anyone, uh, is sleep. So if my body still feels tired, Um, uh, I prioritize my sleep over almost anything else uh, because not only for my body, but for my voice, uh, when I'm singing and screaming every night, 
uh, the only way my voice heals is if I sleep well. So if I didn't sleep that well, I'll stay in bed and sleep longer until I f- actually feel my body recovered. Um, so that's number one. And then number two is uh, just managing water intake, making sure I'm always uh, hydrated. And uh, outside of those two big pillars, um, you know, it's hard to kind of like exercise like a normal routine on the road. It, it's more of I shift to more of a maintenance mentality, whereas when I'm home, it's a little bit more of a growth mentality where I'm trying to push myself or try to, you know, lift a little bit more weight each time or do an extra rep or, you know, pushing yourself a little bit. But when you're on the road, I'm trying to conserve my energy for the show. Um, So if I do exercises, they're a little bit more geared towards, um, maintaining my body or addressing injuries or stretching or, you know, it's a little less lower intensity. Um, so that when I get on stage, I'm still, I still have a full tank of gas and I'm not, my body's not like sore or trying to recover. So it's just a totally different mode that I have to go into. Okay. Uh, how, how many hours of sleep do you need on the tour? Eight hours or maybe five or six? <clears throat> I, I probably sleep more on the road. Um, Like at home, I'm probably about eight to nine hours I like to sleep. Um, on the road, I oftentimes will hit 10 hours of sleep. Oh. Um, it's just because, you know, if I'm performing every day, almost every day, um, there's just so so much adrenaline released and so many things that are, are released on a much greater scale than if I'm just at home living kind of my normal life, day-to-day life. So my body just needs more to recover. So it's about 10 hours when I'm on the road. A okay. Night. Uh, do you find it hard to, to, to get to sleep after the show? Because as you said, there's much adrenaline, you know, uh, full of emotions because, yeah. you know, the, the crowd gives you a lot of energy. Uh, so how, oh, yeah. how does it look in your case? Yeah, so the uh, I have to kind of be conscientious of that as well. Like I, I manage my whole day around my sleep. So what I mean by that is I'll see what time we're going to go on stage. And I try to readjust my entire schedule to put the show at like the peak of my day. Mm-hmm. So whatever show time is, if it's, let's say it's 8 PM or 9 PM to me, I try to aim to make that the middle of my day so that I have enough hours that taper down from that point um, to put me, you know, going to bed at like three in the morning or or something like that to where because because the, the next few hours, especially I'm I'm not going to be able to go to sleep. Uh, I'm too wired. I'm too my body's still amped up from the show. Uh, so that's kind of how I address it. Okay. Uh, yes, I said uh, you have a lot of energy on the stage, but uh, also the whole band, I would say, because I saw you at the Mystic Festival uh, last year. Uh, what's yeah. your actually recipe uh, for a great live show? And maybe how do you remember uh, this particular one in Gdańsk, Poland at, at the Mystic Festival? Yeah, I had, I had a blast at that one. Um, I thought it was a really cool setup. Uh, just, uh, I got to walk the grounds a little bit and, uh, go watch some bands. Uh, so that was a, I don't know, just a really interesting like location. And it was really, 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 really cool. Um, so, uh, but as far as the, what was your first question? It was the, like, how do we, how uh, do, you what's know? your recipe for a great, uh, live show? Um, I think 90% of it is you know, our mentality going into it because, you know, uh, every day is different. Like some audiences are a little warmer than other audiences. Mm -hmm. Like they might know your stuff more or they might know your stuff less. And so trying to focus less on the audience and what, how they're going to react or what they're going to do and just focusing a hundred percent on what we're going to do mm-hmm. puts us in kind of like a control mindset where we can steer where the show's going to go. Like it, it puts us in the driver's seat where you kind of just don't give a fuck 
whether people like it or don't like it, you just care about if you like it. And then that, that bleeds over into everyone's experience. Cause it kind of it implicitly gives them permission to let go because you're letting go and they're watching you let go. Um, and then they f- feel either, you know, based on how, how much you're comfortable, they're going to feel comfortable themselves. So you just kind of try to start that process um, to kind of unlock everyone's, you know, what, what they're there for, which is to let go and have, you know, let the music take over. Okay, great. Uh, how do you remember the time of uh, nothing more, I would say, breaking through on the scene in, in the early 2000s? Because um, I feel like it took so many years, actually, for you to, to be in the place that, that you are right now. Um, yeah, so you're saying how many years to... Or can you rephrase that? Sorry. Uh, how do you remember this time uh, that uh, you guys were breaking through? Because it took a mm. uh, uh, few or maybe more uh, years. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it, it felt like it took around 10 years to really get to where we wanted to get um, and kind of have that success that we're now building on but uh, for you know close to 10 years it was a lot of just playing gigs you don't really want to play and places you don't want to play in front of very few people or you're just kind of scraping for what you can get and so um i guess when we got signed in 2014 i think 2013 or 14 and we put out the self-titled album that was yeah that really was like the beginning of the, the real, um, I don't know, the world kind of knowing who we were and then just building on that. So uh, I guess since then, 20, 2014, it's all been kind of like just building it internationally. I don't know if that answers your question or not. I, I wasn't quite yeah. sure. Uh, and how do you remember the time? Because uh, you were uh, at the first place, the, the drummer in the band. And how do you mm-hmm. remember this moment when you became, you know, the leader, the frontman? Was it hard for you, maybe at the beginning? Oh yeah, yeah. It was very uh, uncomfortable and awkward for quite a while because I, you know, it's just such a different role to play in the band. I mean, when I was on drums, um, I was expressing myself through my through my arms and my hands the whole time. And then when I started singing, I, I just didn't know what to do with my hands. You know, it's like, do I just put them by my side or like, I just didn't, I would probably looked very uncomfortable because um, I hadn't quite figured out like how my body moved yet or how, how singing at the same time as, as being like a front man, not just a singer, but like fronting the band and kind of leading the experience. Um, all that just took time to get comfortable with. Um, so it was like, it, it was a tough transition, but I knew that like anything in life, if you give yourself a realistic timeline to kind of allow yourself to experiment and to fail and to succeed and to grow, um, and you kind of hold yourself accountable to it, that you can you can learn almost anything i think and become almost anything if you you feel like it's in you you know to yeah. become that yeah another <clears throat> uh, big moment for for the band i think was uh were the three nominations for the grammy award actually uh, best rock uh, performance uh, go to war best uh, rock song Uh, go to war yeah. and also best rock uh, album for the stories we tell ourselves so was that i don't know surprising for you to actually receive uh, the three nominations at one time um yeah it was uh yeah that was pretty pretty uh, mind blowing that it all happened at once like that because we had been excuse me um we had hoped we'd get nominations on the album before. And so we finally got a, a nomination and then it turned into three. So we were like, whoa. <laughs> um, and we were all actually 
hung over from a show in where were we? I actually think we were coming from Poland oh. to so we were driving from Poland to Switzerland and we were in like this sprinter van just freezing uh and we were all hung over and like sleeping in our chairs like on this long drive and then somebody Mark got a phone call say that we got nominated for three Grammys. I remember being like kind of half awake, half asleep. And he's like, hey guys, he's like waking us up. He's like, we got nominated for three Grammys. And we're like, wait, is it for real? <laughs> and we're just kind of out of it. And we're like, woohoo. And then, you know, fell back asleep for a little while. Um, but yeah, no, that was a amazing, amazing moment. I ho hoping to have another one of those uh, on this next album. Yeah. Uh, what kind of music and which artists uh, have you been listening to as a kid while growing up, maybe? Because personally, I feel like the music that I discovered in, in my childhood is still really important uh, to me and have kind of maybe structure, structured, shaped uh, my music days that uh, I have now. Sorry, can you rephrase that? What time? Uh, what kind of music and which artists uh, have you been listening to as a kid uh, while growing up? Okay, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, I was mentioning to you before we started the interview uh, that I just saw Tool last night mm -hmm. here in Nashville. Um, that was a band that I uh, definitely was like a big moment for me when I was like 13 years old or somewhere around that age I listened to Anima and it kind of blew my mind um so that was a big influence for me um I Rage Against the Machine was a, a pretty big influence at that in that same time period um I'm trying to think uh when I was really young I listened to this band called Collective Soul uh okay. I listened to them quite a bit just because I think It was one of the only CDs I had access to at the time. Uh, and then Smashing Pumpkins was a band at that time as well that I was listening to. And then as I got older, you know, into, into high school and stuff, I started listening to Muse a lot mm. when they first came out. Um, and I saw them back like when there was maybe 500 people or something at this venue in San Antonio when they were they had just released the Absolution record. <clears throat> and then... Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, scan my brain. There's this band called Dredge that I was a big pivotal band for me, mm -hmm. uh, in high school. And then as the years went on, you know, I've kind of grown to really get into bands like North Lane. I've been really liking them lately. Um, uh, nothing but thieves has been a band I've, mm -hmm. I've listened to a lot as well. Um, I mean, there's a ton of them. I, I listen to so much music now, but those are just a few. Yeah. Uh, and how do you listen to music uh, these days, actually? Uh, because uh, is it only streaming or maybe you have some, uh, I would say, special rituals like listening to vinyls or, or something like that? Yeah, I have a, I have a, a little vinyl collection. Um, I haven't really busted any of them out uh, recently, um, but... I do uh, mainly streaming, just like you know most people, because of the convenience and mm -hmm. while I'm driving and whatnot. But um, yeah, the, the vinyls I'll bust out here and there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what do you think about uh, streaming? Maybe from the artist uh, perspective, is it? I would say good. Uh, way of uh, of you know distributing music these days you think yeah i mean i think it's great um when you're independent like so we're still on an on a label deal and as a listener it's it's great because it's so convenient and you can just check out so many people um but i you know if you're on a label deal they they pretty much absorb most of your royalties uh, that you would get on that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like we have a publishing deal and a record label deal. So we don't really see a whole lot of money through streaming. Um, it, it more goes to recoup our, our album advances and music video advances from the label. 
So once we are finished with our label deal, we have one more album with them. Uh, the the streaming revenue as an independent artist becomes awesome because it's it's like this passive income stream. Whereas back in the day, if people just bought a CD, it, that was it. You know. Now, whereas today, even though the royalty is is very small, it's like fractions of a penny. Mm-hmm. Um, when you add it all up to all the millions and millions of streams, and then if people like if a song really connects with people, they might listen to it for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And because of that, if it gives you this whole opportunity that you didn't really have with someone buying an album back in the day where you could still see a stream of income on that song for years and years and years. So that's what I like about it, but mm-hmm. we'll only be able to really appreciate that when we're, off our label deal. All right. Uh, In the world where I feel like uh, releasing singles is more and more important, what do you think about the album formats, about the album form? Is it still important for you as an artist and also as a listener? Yeah, I think it depends on what what your goals are and what kind of band you are. If If you're a band that has depth and that's kind of part of why people like you, then you you kind of need to cater towards an album and and an experience like we're, we're a little we're more of an album band like we like to have these these bodies of work in our discography that people can point back to or go back to and go oh yeah that album was like life changing i remember you know just hitting play and letting it go and going on the ride like i value that experience because i've had some incredible album albums in my life that really defined like a, a an era in my life mm-hmm. and like the memories of that time and the experiences of that time. Yeah. And so we like to still keep that experience in what we do. Whereas a lot of other artists, if, if your goal or your appeal is just, you just have catchy songs and the lyrics aren't, you know, that spread out into different life experiences or there's not a whole lot of depth to them, then singles just makes more sense from like an economic business point of view. Like you don't really need to get all conceptual and spend all these resources on building this long album uh, when you could just release a song at a time and see how well it does and then chase the ones that do well. Um, So a lot of labels and artists are kind of going more that direction, but We like to, I don't know, do stuff a little bit different than everyone else. Um, just like bands like Tool, you know, they yeah. they do, they go very different than everyone else and they kind of create their own experience. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you guys are uh, coming to Poland on February uh, 7, uh, Kraków, uh, Club Kwadrat. Uh, what could uh, your Polish fans actually expect about this particular show? Yeah, I mean, uh, as always, they can expect uh, a shit ton of energy. <clears throat> um, when we when we come out on stage, we're going to be bringing it. Um, but there is also, uh, I think we're going to be playing uh, two new songs mm-hmm. from the new album. So we'll have some new music that we'll be showcasing. And, uh, you know, we're going to be playing the, the hits as well. You know, the songs that people know us for, like Jenny and Go to War and yeah. This is the Time and kind of our staples. Um, so yeah, man, we're just going to be, uh, we have like this new, just kind of a newfound energy. because this, the, there's a new chapter in our, in our lives and in our career with this next album. So uh, we can all feel it. It's, I don't know, like that next level is unlocking. I can kind of feel it in my gut. So there's a lot of excitement because of that. So we're going to, we're going to bring that to the stage. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Johnny, for for the amazing conversation. And all all the best for you with releasing new music, with the shows, with with the whole tour. All the best for you and uh, thank you so much once again. Hey, thank you, uh, Hubert. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. See you in Poland. (laughs) Yeah, bye.